Have you ever imagined a seaport in the desert? Yeah, it might sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, but not for Israel with its technology and drive to make the most of its limited land and resources. The country really does have plans to build a canal 230 feet wide and 4.6 miles long, cutting deep into the land to reach a large pit where they plan to place the seaport. And you know, that's not even all. The desert port is just part of it. The project also includes a railway and large-scale infrastructure, which could drive the total cost of Israel's venture up to $20 billion. Sounds perfect for Israel, which, thanks to this project, can solve its logistical problems and make a lot of money. However, the project has big challenges, so today we'll look into what this inventive nation has come up with. Israel mainly trades with the rest of the world through two Mediterranean ports, Ashdod and Haifa. The first one is one of Israel's main seaports, located just 25 miles south of Tel Aviv. It plays a key role in Israel's logistics, handling over 60% of all the country's imported goods. The port specializes in container transport and can handle container ships with a capacity of up to 18,000 TEU, or 20-foot containers. Port of Haifa, located in the north of Israel in a natural deep water harbor, is one of the largest in the eastern Mediterranean. It's also Israel's most important port facility. It handles 20 million tons of cargo and more than a million TEUs annually. Basically, these are two real port giants of Israel, and they have one thing in common. To get cargo, for example, from Southeast Asia to one of the ports, you have to sail into the Red Sea, then pass through the Suez Canal, a route that's been really hard to call reliable lately. The first and biggest problem is the Houthi insurgents, who've become a serious threat in the Red Sea, the route ships take to reach the Suez Canal and then on to Israel's ports. They've forced many major shipping companies, including Maersk and Hapagloid, to completely change their routes. This means vessels now go around Africa via the Cape of Good Hope, adding about 10 to 14 days to the journey and pushing up fuel costs by as much as a million dollars per ship. According to estimates, from November to March 2023, about 2,000 ships changed their routes, which drove freight costs up by 300% on some routes. This creates huge uncertainty in global supply chains, since disruptions in one region can trigger a ripple effect worldwide, including higher consumer prices. According to the data from December 2023 to January 2024, shipping traffic through the Suez Canal dropped by a whopping 42%. In other words, almost half of all cargo never even made it to its final destination. Naturally, a good chunk of the vessels going through the Suez Canal are shipments from Israel and to Israel, so the country took a really hard hit. Another, no less serious problem is the accidents and incidents happening right in the canal itself. One of the most famous examples is the Ever Given incident in 2021. For six days of obstruction, 422 ships carrying cargo worth $9.6 billion a day couldn't pass through the canal, causing massive losses for the global economy. The situation proved how quickly and severely trade can be thrown off. However, it was by no means the only one and not even the scariest in its aftermath. In 1967, as a result of the Six-Day War, the canal was shut down for a full eight years. This period was a massive blow to the global economy and forced ship owners to look for alternative routes and switch to supertankers capable of sailing around Africa, which changed logistics forever. So even in peacetime, any accident, whether caused by strong winds, a sandstorm, or human error, can have disastrous consequences. Yes, the Suez Canal is constantly undergoing upgrades that are supposed to fix existing issues, but it's unlikely that this will fully protect against a possible accident that blocks the route. Basically, the Suez Canal for Israel isn't about steady maritime transport. It's about always expecting some problem that could make trade more expensive or stop it altogether. However, the country has another port, Eilat. It's not in the perfect spot because cargo still has to go through the Red Sea, but container ships and other vessels don't have to go through the Suez Canal, so that's at least one less headache. You'd think it's perfect, but there's a reason that Eilid hasn't replaced the Mediterranean port yet. Look, for example, in 2018, the port of Haifa handled 1.46 million TEU. At the same time, the maximum capacity of the port of Eilid is estimated at around 50,000 TEU, almost 30 times less. Maybe they could expand the southern facility to handle more? The Port of Islet is located on a really tiny piece of land, so fitting in the port infrastructure was already a challenge. At the same time, the city's a symbol of Israeli tourism, so a lot of space is taken up by the related infrastructure. 
They'd have to tear down hotels, clear and reshape the beaches, remove other tourist facilities. The result? A loss of money and maybe even the reputation of Israel's tourist capital. And that's only if we're talking about taking down the infrastructure. Hardly anyone would actually enjoy lying on the beach right next to a huge container ship that, well, maybe blocks the sun. Because of all the problems mentioned, the idea came up to move the islet port, which means nothing would need to be done with the existing tourist infrastructure, and it could even be expanded further. Yes, we're talking about moving the port inland. The project got its name from what the port is meant to be, Southern Gateway. The key engineering element of the project is the construction of a new port, which is supposed to be inland, to the north of the existing one, in a desert area. Right here, 4.6 miles from the shore, right next to the border with Jordan. It's worth noting that you can't just set a port on sand or rocks and wait for ships to somehow dock there. So as part of the project, the Israelis plan to place all the port infrastructure near a huge pit, let's say the port's water area, located in the desert. There's no information on how much soil needs to be dug out for this, but you can safely assume it's a lot, since even the smallest container ships require more than 33 feet of depth to dock, and even with a margin. And you know, the project documents aren't talking about small container ships as part of the Southern Gateway project. They plan to build port infrastructure for deep water vessels. These kinds of watercraft need a depth of roughly 46 to 52 feet, which makes the excavation work even more complicated and massive. One can confidently say that Israelis will have to handle the lifting and moving of millions of cubic feet of earth. According to the plan, the new port will be built using advanced technology and will be able to handle the world's biggest cargo ships. Its infrastructure will feature deep water docks with automated loading and unloading systems and robotic cranes that can move containers fast and efficiently. Large container terminals equipped with smart management systems will guarantee uninterrupted cargo processing. Around the new port, as planned in the Southern Gateway project, there's supposed to be a large industrial and logistics area with warehouses, customs points, distribution centers, and processing plants. You could say it's a whole logistics city right next to the port, which is really convenient and efficient for logistics. The goods arrive, get unloaded and processed, and then move on to another point in Israel. Yes, ships will be able to dock at the port, and as they say, even deep water ones, but how will they get there? For that, the Israelis plan to build a canal 4.6 miles long and 230 feet wide, which will also run close to the border with Jordan. Building such a hydraulic structure in the desert area is an extremely challenging engineering task. The project will require a massive amount of earthworks to excavate the soil, as well as the construction of strong shoreline structures capable of withstanding the effects of seawater and erosion. Engineers will need to design a system that can maintain the necessary depth and width for the largest container ships to pass through while, of course, minimizing environmental risks. And here we should point out the issue Eilitz Port is facing at the moment. There's no railway linking it to the main cities of Israel, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. Not even to Beersheba, the closest major city. Right now, this is one of the reasons why the southern port isn't being expanded. It's too isolated. Imagine the port got expanded and started handling way more cargo. A container ship comes in, gets unloaded, and then all that stuff has to somehow be delivered to the main cities since they're the consumers. From Eilat to Beersheba, goods will have to be transported by trucks. This isn't the most efficient solution because it takes much longer than trains and there are more risks due to a higher chance of accidents on the roads. If the cargo gets stuck in a serious traffic jam, that's time wasted, and wasted time in trade means extra costs, which no company wants to deal with. However, the Southern Gateway Project's all about building the massive link in the form of a railway line from Eilat to Israel's central regions. This railway corridor, which will stretch about 155 miles, is expected to become a vital land artery that'll allow goods to be transported efficiently and quickly from the new port to anywhere in the country. At the same time, the line will cut through the Negev Desert, requiring the construction of over 60 bridges, several tunnels, and viaducts to navigate the challenging terrain. Overall, laying such a route is far from an easy task, which is why the total cost of the railway infrastructure, including all works, is estimated at $8 billion. Besides the transport infrastructure, the project also includes a complete redesign of part of Eilat's urban space, 
The area currently occupied by the port on the seaside will be cleared and handed over to the city. On this plot, which covers a valuable stretch of coastline, new hotels, residential neighborhoods, parks, recreational areas, and public spaces are planned. This move is meant to significantly boost Eilat's tourism potential, make its coast more accessible for residents and visitors, and give the city a fresh push for growth. The construction of new hotels and recreational spaces will also diversify the city's economy, making it less dependent on just trade. When the project to transfer the Eilat port is fully completed, it'll become one of Israel's key strategic assets with a profound and wide-ranging effect on the nation's economy and geopolitical stance. Finishing it won't just mean constructing a new site, it'll mean establishing a complete logistics hub capable of reshaping trade, bolstering national security, and giving new impetus to the development of the whole southern region. Once everything envisioned comes to life, Eilat will genuinely become the southern gateway a trade route that can handle even deep water ships and then efficiently transport goods by railway to the most developed area of Israel. It's unlikely that the port will become the main player in all of Israel's international sea trade, but it'll definitely become a more important part of it. Besides, this will help ease the pressure on the very busy Ashdod and Haifa ports, giving a chance to boost trade with European countries via the Mediterranean. And of course, if the Southern Gate project gets off the ground, maritime trade with all the countries that ship to Israel or receive goods from it via the Red Sea and the Suez Canal will become safer. The thing is, thanks to moving the port and the railway infrastructure, it won't be necessary to go through that very canal, which is constantly at risk of some incident that slows down cargo flows. Most likely, this will even increase cargo traffic to and from Israel, which will both improve the country's supply of resources and generate profits from selling goods. Besides that, construction, especially on such a large scale, creates a ton of jobs. Moreover, once the Southern Gateway project is finished, all the built infrastructure will also need a huge number of workers. The port has to run, the canal needs maintenance, the railway too, basically it's going to need a lot of workforce. And that will definitely be good for Israel as a whole, and for Eilat in particular. Let's not forget about Eilat's tourism, which should boom once the port is moved from its current spot. So if the city is already Israel's tourism capital, the Southern Gateway Project will only strengthen that status. Naturally, this will attract more tourists, which means Eilat will make more money from this sector. However, despite such a huge number of benefits that will come after its implementation, the Southern Gateway Project is currently just standing still, without much progress. As of 2025, the idea is officially being discussed at high levels among decision makers. Besides that, the project even went through a stage of pre-project development, so overall, Southern Gateway is at the stage of technical, economic, and preliminary project assessments. But so far, not a single stone has been laid, no construction work is being carried out, and you could say that this is quite justified. The first reason is the massive financial requirements. We only mentioned the railway infrastructure, which according to 2025 figures comes to $8 billion. The rest wasn't mentioned, since the data is very scattered. So, for example, back in 2012, there was information that the canal plus the earthworks for a port inland were estimated at around $3 billion. Now that price could be much higher. According to some sources, all the earthworks and other construction for the port and canal could reach $10 billion. Add to that the logistics and industrial zone around it and a bunch of other costs, and you end up with a total of $15 to $20 billion. And this isn't China, it's Israel, which has a much smaller budget for building such mega projects. But it's not just about that. First off, even in the relocated port of Eilat, trading ships will still have to sail through the Red Sea. In that sense, nothing changes compared to what we have now. Container ships and other vessels will remain under serious threat of attack. Does Israel really need a route that costs $20 billion and only solves one problem, the Suez Canal? Experts are skeptical. On top of that, many wonder why spend so much on a new route when so much has already been invested in the ports of Haifa and Ashdod. For example, in 2021, a new terminal called Bayport opened in Haifa with a total cost of around $1.7 billion. At the same time, in 2022 to 2023, it was announced that roughly another $288 million would be spent on further port upgrades. As for Ashdod, there's info now that between $650 and $700 million is set aside for upgrading the docks and equipment, so a lot of money has already been spent, plus all these improvement plans. It definitely raises questions about whether yet another very expensive project makes sense, especially since it won't fix all the problems. 
And we can't leave out the environment. Many people even call the regular expansion of Eilid's port impossible, since the project would do serious harm to the Gulf of Aqaba's unique ecosystem. The Bay Region is famous for its incredible coral reefs, which are among the northernmost and densest coral systems in the world. They're a fragile and biologically rich habitat, critically important for marine biodiversity. Any expansion of port facilities will inevitably lead to water pollution from oil, industrial waste, and sediment from dredging. These pollutants can smother the corals, disrupt their symbiosis with algae, and cause bleaching and mass die-offs. Moreover, increased shipping and traffic of large vessels will cause physical damage to the reefs, ship wakes and waves can break the fragile coral structures, and the discharge of ballast water can introduce invasive species, causing irreversible harm. Having a port so close to this unique ecosystem makes any expansion environmentally unacceptable. Back in 1963, the Israeli government introduced the National Parks and Nature Reserves Act to safeguard the reefs, prohibiting any construction that might damage coral reefs, including in the Gulf of Aqaba. While this act doesn't fully rule out development, it certainly makes it harder. Here we're talking about work that's way more massive than a typical port expansion, so you could say the damage to nature could be huge. To prove otherwise, the project will have to spend extra money on different environmental tests, inspections, and sorting out bureaucracy. Most likely, people behind the project will also have to pay numerous compensations, negotiate with conservation groups, and with ordinary people who clearly care about the bay's nature. Simply put, the price, already high, could go even higher. Overall, if the project ever gets off the ground, it'll only happen by overcoming some serious hurdles. Still, there's hope, because it does promise some really big benefits.